Well, good evening. I'm here joined with the First Lady of Florida, uh, Kevin Guthrie, the Director of Division of Emergency Management, uh, Josie Tamayo, Chief Executive Officer of Volunteer Florida, Gracia Check from FEMA, Jim Eifert, Florida National Guard, and John Ferner, President and Chief Executive Officer of Walmart US. So welcome to Florida. We're happy uh, that you're here. Uh, I just got back from surveying the damage in Charlotte and Lee counties. And um, you know, some of the damage was um, you know, almost indescribable uh, to see a house just sitting in the middle of Estero Bay, literally was have gotten picked up, flown because of the, the massive wind speed and the storm surge and deposited uh, in a body of water. There was cars floating uh, in the middle uh, of the water. Some of the homes were, were total losses. I would say the most significant damage that I saw was on uh, Fort Myers Beach. Uh, some of the homes were wiped out and some of it was just concrete slabs. Of course, there were damage to, to some of our infrastructure, particularly the Sanibel Causeway. There were uh, breaks in that in multiple different areas. It was interesting, the pylons on the water where you had that part of the bridge, that actually was, was good. It was the point where it was on a sandbar that just got totally wiped away or from the mainland, you know, there was breaks there. So that's gonna require major, major uh, uh, overhaul and potentially a complete rebuild. They're gonna look at it and see um, that's the only way on Sanibel and Captiva Island. So the operations to help people there have been uh, mostly by air uh, in all told search and rescue operations. It started in the wee hours of the morning. As soon as the winds died down enough to where it was safe, uh, you had Coast Guard assets, you had urban search and rescue teams. We've had the National Guard out assisting people. Uh, there have been more than 700 confirmed rescues, and there's likely uh, many more than that uh, that will be confirmed as more data comes in. Uh, people have been rescued from places like Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel, uh, Marco Island, as well as the Barrier Islands in Charlotte County. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of um, calls coming in as the storm was really raging yesterday. Uh, people uh, who did not evacuate were hunkered down. There was storm surge. There was a lot of, of, um, uh, of apprehension, understandably. When initially the first responders came this morning, people would wave them down, uh, whether they were by helicopter, boat, or high water vehicle. Now what they're finding is on places like Sanibel, most of the residents are just waving thank you for coming, but they say that they're fine uh, and that they're staying put. Now, I think that there's gonna be issues with being on some of those islands uh, because they're not gonna have services like we expect uh, for quite some time given the limitations of transportation. Uh, but nevertheless, that, that's a sign that, that some of the folks who did ride it out uh, ha, are stabilized uh, in their home. Uh, they are first responders are doing uh, targeted searches, just going home by home, checking to see um, if people are okay, and then responding to specific reports uh, if they're missing loved ones. Uh, there will, can, of course, be uh, many more rescues that are added uh, to the tiller. Uh, now, we, we absolutely expect to have mortality from this hurricane, but I'll just caution people. You know, there's a process by where that is confirmed, um, and there's people, I know that people have said certain things. Um, in terms of confirmed, uh, that will be made apparent over the coming days. Um, but, but I think the things that have been said out there, that is not something that has been confirmed at this, at this juncture. Uh, of course, we have uh, thousands and thousands of people on the ground uh, working to restore power, uh, opening the roads, bringing in food and water, and restoring communications. Talking with uh, local folks in Lee County, uh, probably the biggest immediate hurdle that they're facing is their county water utility had a big water main break. Uh, that is necessary to be fixed in order to provide basic water services uh, for the residents of the county. So they have been working to troubleshoot it. They requested uh, the state to enlist federal support to help diagnose and potentially fix the problem. Uh, so we worked with FEMA and, and Gracia and the Army Corps of Engineers uh, came in. I mean, they came in pretty early. Um, I think I think I think Kevin called them maybe like three in the morning. They were in Southwest Florida from Jacksonville 
by early this afternoon. And so they're helping to diagnose and hopefully be able to remedy that. But that's going to be something that's very, very important for the county uh, to get fixed. In the meantime, uh, we are assisting health care facilities uh, to provide uh, working water because they need that to be able to take care of their patients. So we're shuttling water from Lakeland into health care facilities. Uh, right now, there are about 20 trucks en route with 60,000 gallons of water for a total of 1.2 million gallons of water. And I think they have been able to fix some of the water-ish. Mm -hmm. one, one of the three hospitals has actually been able to fix the water problem there. So that's good news. Uh, Port Tampa, Port Everglades, um, there the fuel is flowing in to some of our major ports and so you're seeing a lot of fuel now flowing throughout the state more than 330 gall 30 thousand gallons of fuel have already been moved in to southwest florida i actually saw a couple of the gas stations open in in the fort myers area when we were there today uh, with this fuel the state of florida set up six fuel depots to fully support all first response efforts and we think the remaining ports in the state of florida uh, will open between sometime tomorrow and sometime on Saturday. Uh, there's been a massive amount of, of uh, supplies staged. We're also bringing more into the region, more ambulances, more food, water, and ice, more generators, more. Uh, actually, we're bringing in two full-service mechanical shops uh, to help to repair and maintain emergency vehicles, which, you know, they're in rugged conditions when you're going through uh, water and others bringing in more tarps, bringing in kits for parents of infants and toddlers uh, to give them 10 days uh, a, a worth of support, uh, and bringing in more high water ladders. Now, as of 6 p.m., there are 2.6 million approximately reported power outages through, throughout the state of Florida, and that was anticipated. Uh, so far, compared to this morning, uh, 200,000 accounts have been restored in southwest Florida, uh, 28,000 in Lee, 62,000 in Sarasota, 14,000 in Collier, 33,000 in Manatee, 12,000 in Charlotte, and 44,000 in Hillsboro have been restored. Of course, the pre-staging for this was over 42,000 linemen. So they're there on the ground, really in different parts of the state, but particularly in southwest Florida. Uh, when they first got in there, of course, they're looking to see what is the damage, uh, how much of our infrastructure has been, has been destroyed, how much of it has, 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 has held up. And I can tell you, when we were in Charlotte, uh, the reports were generally positive that a lot of that infrastructure had been able to weather the storm. You still have to work, obviously, to reconnect the power. Uh, but in some areas, you may need to rebuild from the ground up. In other areas where the infrastructure maintained integrity, uh, you would be more just trying to, to, to rehook everything. So that's, that's a 24-7 process. So if anybody sees uh, some of the utility trucks pulled over somewhere and, and maybe someone getting rest, understand they're working constant shifts uh, and everyone's on the clock the whole time and they don't actually ever have a time where people are not working. So we really appreciate that because we understand how important it is uh, for folks to have those basic services uh, resume. Uh, there have, of course, been damages to cell phone towers, uh, particularly in places like Lee uh, County. Uh, the the uh, co telecom companies have brought in, they, they earmarked 100 cell phone towers uh, being set up, uh, and, and many of those are being set up in southwest Florida. I've been able to speak with the CEOs of both AT&T and T-Mobile. While there have been damages, a lot of their infrastructure uh, has, uh, has weathered the storm uh, fairly well. So while there may need to be repairs, uh, you know, they feel good about getting up service. Um, and I know some people do have service in those areas, and, and we were able to see that. FDOT had more than 1,200 personnel on the ground, and, and I'm happy to report the road situation is, is by and large really good. I think if I was just talking with Kevin before we came out here, if we were here yesterday at like noon uh, thinking about what the road situation would look like, uh, I think we thought that there would have been way, way more roads that were blocked by debris. Uh, of course, we did have the Sanibel. I mean, there are, there are issues. But there is also a lot of roads where the traffic is flowing on I-75 without a problem, and most of the other roads um, are doing really well. Sunshine Skyway Bridge has reopened, and so we are happy to see that. Uh, most school districts throughout the state will be reopening either Friday or Monday. Obviously, Lee and, and some of those areas uh, may be a little bit different calculation for them. Uh, we're thankful that FEMA has activated individual assistance for Floridians who've been affected by this storm. If you are in need of help recovering, visit disasterassistance.gov or call 1-800-621-3362. 
Uh, FEMA has approved our request to add some of the central Florida counties into the individual assistance. Uh, Kevin will have more details on that, but we appreciate that because you look at the images, like you can see a house that's been totaled on Fort Myers Beach, and obviously it's a very sad thing to see. You can see boats that have been flipped over or cars that have been flipped over, and, and those are very striking images. Uh, but as the storm has moved through the state, it has caused a, a, a lot of problems with really historic flooding in, in parts of central Florida and into northeast Florida. And so it's important that those folks uh, also have the ability to get assistance if they need it. Uh, over 8,700 people have already registered with FEMA. Um, if you're uh, gonna, th gonna make a claim, take a picture. If you've had flooding, take a picture of the water line on your house. Make sure you're documenting the damage. Jimmy Patronis, our chief financial officer, is gonna be doing insurance villages uh, at these disaster recovery sites. So if you go in, now you don't need to go in to get FEMA assistance, you can do it online, but if you have questions, you go in, uh, you can have people from the different insurance carriers. Uh, Jimmy's also gonna help people who have uh, NFIP flood policies uh, to be able to file those claims and get those claims paid uh, as soon as possible. And, and we uh, expect that, that that will be done without, without much delay from, from the insurance carriers. We're happy that a lot of businesses have committed to provide our first responders and volunteers uh, with sustenance, Culver's, Firehouse Subs, Burger King, Four Rivers Smokehouse, and Maria Oyster Bar and Texas Roadhouse. And we think many, many more will want to come and also offer assistance. Uh, for those who are coming in as either first responders or linemen, uh, Bucky's is giving away meals and soft drinks. If you stop in their Daytona location, uh, you'll be able to avail yourself of some really good stuff there. Uh, we're continuing, as, as uh, Kevin has said, you know, these first 72 hours are really life safety and then uh, working to restore the, the main uh, services, power, fuel, and communications. And there's massive numbers of people on the ground working 24-7 to do that. Uh, of course, it's too early to know exactly what the needs of, of everybody uh, is going to be, but we obviously anticipate some Floridians uh, may end up being displaced from their homes, and the First Lady is spearheading efforts with Volunteer Florida to activate the Florida Disaster Fund, where people can donate. Uh, and it's much better to donate financially than to send items, and we really appreciate the thought when people want to send water, or they want to send these things, uh, but, you know, Florida DEM and others have been contracted for this, so this stuff is there. Uh, the best thing you can do if you're going to give a, a financial contribution, that can go to some of these organizations uh, that are a little bit more nimble with how they help people. You know, FEMA, you, you know, Gracia will say, you have statutes and you have regulations and you have things. You either qualify for certain types of individual assistance or you don't. They're not able to go outside of what Congress has, has decreed on that. A private organization, if you have more unique needs that maybe aren't covered by that program, they can meet those needs. And so providing the, the cash assistance is the best way to do that. If you want to contribute, go to www.floridadisasterfund.org or text disaster to 2022. Uh, Actually, what is it? It's, it's more than 20222. Okay, well, I'll let the First Lady do that because she does it better than me. They, they put text to 2022 on this, and that I know it's more than that. I'm not a text guy, but I do know you need more numbers than that. All right, for those who want to come volunteer in person, that's another way where you can really be, be helpful. And Volunteer Florida has a website for that, www.volunteerflorida.org, if you want to see volunteer opportunities. And we would certainly welcome individuals that want to give, uh, obviously, their money, but also their personal uh, time and effort. Okay, Kevin Guthrie's here with some additional updates. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, First Lady, for uh, your going out to the area today and doing some on-site assessments. Um, we're entering that phase of the response where we start to uh, really get into what's referred to as indirect deaths. We've been, myself and the governor have been mentioning this now for quite some time, generator safety, generator safety, generator safety. Now we're going to start adding chainsaw safety, getting on ladders, getting on roofs, watching out for power lines that are mixed inside of trees. People need to be extremely careful. If you do not know how to use a chainsaw, if you do not know how to climb a ladder, if you do not know what the difference is between a cable line and a power line, you should not be doing that. Leave that to the professionals. Again, as the governor indicated two days ago, 
we have significantly more indirect deaths from disasters that are 100% avoidable than we do the disaster itself. So please be safe. Drone pilots. We're starting to have some issues with drone pilots in areas. Please do not operate your drones in the areas where we have military aircraft, search and rescue aircraft working. When you go in there with their drone or your drone, they have to stop working. Please stay out of the area and let us, uh, let us do our job. Similarly, we saw it down in uh, Fort Myers today. People are wanting to go out and look at the damage. For every car that's going down a, a street, that's preventing a power line crew from getting in there and working. It's preventing a search and rescue cr crew from getting in there and working. Please stay outside these areas so that we can get in there. Power outages are being restored. The governor read through a laundry list of individuals that are having power restored. We did hear a question earlier uh, today about, well, it's still 2.6 million. It was 2.6 million this morning. Jacksonville has been hit. We have power outages in uh, Duval County, St. John's County, Nassau County, Baker County. So those are going to offset here for a little bit while, or for a little while. FPL, the Municipal Electric Association and its municipal electric partners, the cooperative electric programs are getting their stuff turned back on. Please be patient. I, we have every faith and trust in them to restore the power. However, in places where we're going to have to rebuild infrastructure, that's going to take longer, as the governor mentioned. Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel, Pine Island, that's going to take some time. In those areas, we do have some other challenges. There is potentially vehicles in the water. There are potentially boats in the water. There is potentially debris in the water. We will be working with our federal partners to mission assign or ask their request and mission assign special resources to go in there and start looking under the water to do an underwater survey to ensure that we can actually get the necessary barges and heavy equipment into those areas to respond effectively. I think this is an appropriate time to say, Gracia, thank you very much for all your assistance. Admiral McPherson as well, as well as uh, the TAG, uh, General Eifert, has been with me since day one, sitting here. He was here at 0700, which means he had to leave St. Augustine at 04-something. Thank you very much. Um, we, have, we continue to mobilize uh, additional resources to impacted areas. Specifically today, we did more than 400 bottles of oxygen, 100 ambulances, an additional 120 utility trucks, four mobile triage units. These are specific units to help triage patients if somebody becomes injured. We do have hospitals that have some issues and cannot intake patients. So this is the ability to triage individuals for that. 60 truckloads of water, 40 truckloads of meals, 40 truckloads of ice. That was a question earlier a couple of days ago. We have brought in additional pet foods, supplies for displaced pets. Five truckloads of blankets, five truckloads of cots, and I believe this uh, was requested earlier by someone, nearly 100,000 tarps. FDM recovery staff are now beginning the uh, process of rapid damage assessments in the impacted counties to expedite all available federal assistance for the disaster recovery. The governor mentioned earlier that additional counties have been added to the Category A debris removal expedited project or expedited uh, uh, declaration and IA or individual assistance. Those counties are Orange, Osceola, Seminole, and Polk. Again, these counties are available for 30 days at 100% in federal assistance. I am going to turn to Gracia and ask, what is that website that we need to direct everyone to for mobile intake? For registration. For registration. For survivors, it is uh, disasterassistance.org. Disasterassistance.org. So again, we're proud that 8,700 people have already done that, and we want to continue to do as much as we can via web registration. Again, Governor, First Lady, thank you so much for your leadership today. Okay, First Lady. All right, well, flying over the devastation and destruction firsthand, all I can say is, you know, our hearts and our prayers are with so many people who are suffering, uh, which is why about 24 hours ago, uh, we launched the Disaster Relief Fund 
and I'm happy to say that after 24 hours, we have raised more than $10 million into that fund. And if you remember this morning, just at 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., we came out here and we talked with you. I think it was at $1.6 million. So now we're over $10 million. So I just want to say thank you to all of the great Floridians who stepped up to support our efforts and all of the people across the country who are helping Floridians. Thank you. We are going to make a big difference to help get resources immediately to those people who need them most. Uh, Amazon, we want to thank them. Centene, Ian McKetney, Florida Blue, Lanier, Walmart, we'll be hearing from them in just a second, donated a million dollars. Boeing, Publix, Simply Healthcare, Airbnb, Tico Energy, Wells Fargo, Verizon, CVS, Duke Energy, Goldman Sachs, Rumble, Florida Power and Light, National Christian Foundation, the PGA Tour, and Horn, just to name a few, and that doesn't even go into all of the donations that came in from people who are giving five and ten dollars, and thank you, thank you so much for what you're doing. Also want to say thank you to Tom Brady, who put on his website a special shout out to the defense, uh, or to our uh, fund, uh, the Florida Disaster Fund, that got a lot of attention and raised a lot of money, so thank you for your support of your community. Also, uh, thank you to Visa, Amex, PayPal, and Bur Braintree. They are waiving their fees, so all of this money will go directly to servicing the people in need. Uh, and again, as the governor mentioned, one of the important things to understand about this fund and why it's so important is because we are getting needs, needs instantaneously into the EOC, into the Emergency Operations Center. And so we're able then to communicate those needs to those nonprofits on the ground so we can meet them quickly. And so these funds make a big difference to help micro-target what we're seeing. And again, when we are flying over Lee County, and some of these areas that were just devastated, they are going to need things like foods and tarps and what have you. And so what is not being supplemented by the state, which is a lot, we will be able to do in the private sector. Uh, so again, to give the, the website, floridadisasterfund.org, and you can also text disaster to 20222. And God bless you and thank you for your support. Okay. All right, Volunteer Florida, Josie Tamayo. Good evening, everyone, and I want to thank you on behalf uh, for being here. And first of all, I want to thank, first of all, the First Lady and the Governor for their leadership in this. And I must say it is a record amount of money that we have now um, received for the voluntary, for the disaster fund. And I want to thank, obviously, our partners, our corporate partners. I will say to you, we have been on the phone calling people, and they have been giving to people in Florida specifically uh, with needs, and we plan to make very good use of that money. And I want to thank each and every person that has reached out, called, and specifically for those in the storm's path uh, that are now recovering. And so these funds will go for response and recovery. Uh, we will be um, doing that, looking at all of that very carefully. And I want to thank our corporate mar partners, specifically uh, Walmart, who has, uh, in fact, Ms. Modi Brown is on our foundation. And this fund is uh, administered through our volunt uh, Volunteer Florida Foundation. So on behalf of everyone, I want to thank you all for being specifically. I want to thank the First Lady for her leadership on this and the Governor and everyone who has called in need. And uh, please, I want to tell you, if you want to volunteer, please go to our website at volunteerflorida.org. Uh, we have someone standing by that can connect you with nonprofits that are in need of volunteers. And also, uh, www.floridadisasterfund.org and or text uh, disaster uh, to 202222. Uh, and I will say there will be a banner at the FSU football game this weekend with our Florida Disaster Fund and also USF has agreed to do that. And in my mind, I'm gonna get every college um, team to do that in Florida as long as we need them. Thank you so much and thank you First Lady and Governor. Okay. Okay, we're happy to have John Ferner, President and Chief Executive Officer of Walmart. Good evening and thank you Governor and First Lady for uh, for coming together today and also for your, your team's quick response following just the devastation that we're seeing from, from the hurricane. So I'm proud to be with you here in Florida tonight representing Walmart to further discuss how Walmart will continue partnering uh, with all of you and your team while we continue to respond to the devastation of the storm. Supporting communities is core to Walmart and Florida is our community. Many of our associates, customers and members all across Florida are feeling the effects and the, of the extensive damage caused by the storm and like all of you, we've been closely monitoring its track to ensure that we stay 
in tune with what our stores, our clubs, our supply chain teams need to be doing to serve before, during, and after the storm. So in preparation for the response and recovery, we've strategically placed things like generators, refrigerated trailers, merchandise, and additional personnel in the right locations to give us the best opportunity to resume operations as soon as it's safe to do so. We have 385 stores and clubs here in Florida, nine distribution centers, and at one point today, 244 of those were closed. And we think over the next day or so, we'll have the majority of those back open and operating. So we've helped relocate associates living in mandatory evacuation zones, and we're carrying out wellness checks for those living in the other impacted areas. Now, throughout all of this, our thoughts and our prayers remain with those who are impacted, and we are moving quickly to help. To that end, on behalf of Walmart, Sam's Club, and the Walmart Foundation, I'm announcing our commitment of up to $6 million for recovery and relief efforts. And this level of support does include, uh, First Lady now, a $1.5 million investment to support the Florida Disaster Fund, donation to, donations of essential supplies, and grants to local and national organizations who are here on the ground supporting relief efforts. Now what we do know is Walmart customers, members, and our associates are the most general people that we know. And as part of this investment, we're also launching a national customer and member giving campaign at our stores and clubs, and an associate donation campaign through Walmart's associate giving program. And we understand our responsibility to the communities we serve and we'll proudly work side by side with each and every one of you to ensure we're doing everything we can along with our first responders to restore our communities as quickly as possible. And this includes mobilizing resources and services to those people who need them. So as a company and as fellow Floridians, when our friends, our neighbors, and our loved ones need help, we're, we will gladly step forward to support them. Thank you. Okay, so we're um, uh, very, very much monitoring the, the impacts that we're, that we're seeing in, in other parts of the state other than Southwest Florida. Um, and I know uh, Kevin is uh, uh, working on, you know, we're gonna obviously have a big response in Southwest Florida, but when you talk about FEMA, some of these other things, uh, that there's gonna be a need to be response in some of these other parts of the state uh, on an individual basis. And so I know he's working uh, on that. And um, you know we're gonna be back down in all these areas and, and working hard to make sure uh, that we can get people back on their feet. And with that, I'll take some question. I know that a lot of people are questioning what the casualty count is, and I know you addressed it, but um, is the state at least preparing for a large casualty situation given what we heard from uh, the Lee County Sheriff as well as the president earlier today? Well, I mean, I think it's a massive storm. I mean, I think we anticipate casualties. I think Kevin made a good point about how many are going to happen from the time it hits on. We've stressed to try to minimize both, obviously, but we're now in the situation where uh, there's going to be hazards out where people can uh, be in harm's way still. Just because the storm has passed does not mean that, that there's not additional hazards um, operating things like generators standing. Now, fortunately, I was looking, you know, there wasn't as much standing water as I was anticipating. I think that the surge, storm surge that they had feared in Charlotte, while they did get water, there was flooding. I don't think it was at quite the level that was initially feared. Obviously in Lee, you know, you had a massive storm surge at the barrier islands. You did have some on the mainland, but I saw the roads by and large clear. There were a couple ice roadways where I saw uh, where there was water. So hopefully uh, some of those hazards um, are minimized. Um, you know, I think if you look at the, the most significant storm in the history of Florida uh, was Okeechobee in the 20s, and uh, you guys can look it up, but I mean, I don't, I don't think we would be anywhere approaching that. We've heard, you know, just anecdotally from various local officials, the total would be about 16 people right now dead. Uh, you're not confirming that. But I'm wondering, as, as you're getting out to these barrier islands now, are, are, you, are you getting people off these islands? Are you, you are not finding massive numbers of dead people on these islands. That is correct. I think the, the, But at the same time, you know, they're going to see people that may be visibly in need or knocking on doors, and most of them are saying, I'm fine. If there's no answer, I don't know that they're going into those homes. Now, many of those homes are vacation homes and seasonal residents, so we'll see. Now, there are... Uh, so what will be confirmed as storm related, you know, that, that will happen, you know, relatively soon. I can tell you that there have been some non-storm related uh, fatalities as well. I mean, for example, in Charlotte County, they reported a suicide during the storm. They also had somebody pass away from a heart attack because 
you don't have access to emergency services for a certain period of time. And so that could have been somebody you know, that would have gone to the hospital. So there's a lot of those things. Uh, they're working through it and um, we'll see. But I can, I can say, I think Kevin, there's not been in these rescue efforts, um, you know, deceased people found as of yet. Now that may change, of course, uh, as, they, as they do more, but they've been able to, to lift a lot of people out of those islands. And I know a lot of those people have been happy, but increasingly there are people who are happy that people are out there looking out for them, but say, thank you, you know, we're good. Um, you know, I, I don't know that that is necessarily, they're gonna wanna do that over the long term because if there's structural damage for some of the underlying services, it's just gonna take a little longer for the utilities uh, to be able to get that up and running. But nevertheless, that's the posture a lot of them have taken. Can you give us a sense, to that point, can you give us a sense of what recovery is going to look like in the hardest hit areas, especially in Lee County, it sounds like? Um, are we talking about, you know, displacement for months and, and, and months on end? Are they going to be able to, um, are they going to have to send their kids to different schools? Are there schools that are just not going to be able to open for... for well, I think they're all still assessing that. I think that they're looking to see um, exactly how many people are going to be displaced. Clearly, you know, you have some homes that were a total loss. There's no question about that. How many of those were rental homes? How many of those were permanent residents? I think people are still looking at how many of those were seasonal homes for seasonal residents. I think they're sorting all that out. Uh, as more people come forward, they are keeping the shelters open in Lee County in case people have been displaced and they need a place to stay. Obviously with FEMA offering individual assistance, people who are gonna need housing assistance are gonna be able to sign up and get that. So I think you'll have a better sense at that point. Um, but I, I, you know, my sense would be just kind of looking at it. Sanibel had some serious destruction uh, and a lot of destruction on some of the, the underlying infrastructure, uh, which is obviously important. I mean, they used to not have a bridge there. It would take like a ferry back and forth. Uh, you know, now you're back to kind of before that causeway was there. Fort Myers Beach, really, really serious uh, uh, damage. Some of the other places, when you're in a helicopter looking over, I see the homes are intact. I didn't see massive debris in some of the neighborhoods, but you also don't know how much flood damage that they had because that water could have been four feet at this time yesterday and then it subsided. And so that will all be things I think that people will determine um, as the days go on. But I think the folks in Lee um, you know, are prepared for some level of displacement. And I know Kevin has worked and, and FEMA has worked uh, on, on some solutions, but I don't know that we know exactly how many. Kevin, do you wanna add about what you're seeing so far? So I, I agree with the governor wholeheartedly on the uh, damage assessment so far. You know, and again, this is aerial damage assessment flying into the area, flying around a little bit of the ground transportation that we were doing. Um, I, I, I will just add to it, you know, the, the next step in this recovery process is we will, uh, I say we, we in support of the local counties will open up points of distribution where we will have food, water, potentially ice depending on the situation and I want to manage that expectation ice is usually given to help keep um, cold medications cold so if that's the situation you will be given ice um, we will be providing tarps to those counties that have requested tarps so that they can do some emergency repairs uh, we are looking at turning on a program called the blue roof program which is a slightly different than a tarp through FEMA and I'm sure FEMA will action that over to the US Army Corps the next phase of that is gonna be the disaster recovery centers that we will open up in the individual counties. This is a place where, again, as the governor has mentioned before, we will team up with the CFO's office to have insurance villages. We will team up with uh, individuals like Department of Economic Opportunity to come in and uh, help people with small business situations. We will uh, team with the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, uh, the Department of Health, vital records, uh, ID cards, driver's licenses, and things like that that have been lost. And the other state agency that's helped us out there, is there's a laundry list of uh, human services, Department of Elder Affairs, Veterans Affairs, Children's and Families, and so on. So all of those will start to be set up over the next probably week or so. It just all depends on when we, get, we can get water restored to Lee County and the impacted area and when we can get power restored to the impacted area. As those things happen, we'll move in very uh, uh, quickly with recovery services. Um, you know, I don't want to steal it from the governor, but the governor will be dispatching me to the area. We talked about this on the plane. I will probably be down in the area in the most impacted area for probably 30 days or more to ensure that the recovery is being handled effectively and remove any type of bureaucratic issues that might be going on. Uh, You've been in frequent conversation uh, with the White House during this devastating time for Florida. What does it look like when the president comes to town? What's your plan? 
I, I, don't, I don't know if he's announced he's coming or not. I know that the FEMA administrator, she will be here tomorrow, if not today. Um, and so we'll be working. I don't know if she's planning on traveling with us on all our itinerary, but she's welcome to do that. Uh, we are going to be back down in southwest Florida, but we're also working to see other impacted areas throughout the state uh, to, to, to go and potentially visit, meet with folks and see, see what they need. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I view this as something that you got folks that, that are in need uh, and local, federal, state, you know, we have a responsibility to work together. Uh, I tell you, the way the, the, the locals have, have worked really hard, I mean, it's been really impressive to watch uh, because this is not an easy thing to deal with. It's also not an easy thing when you have uh, forecasts all over the map and you're not necessarily sure where it's going. Naples and Fort Myers were out of the, out of the cone 72 hours before the, before the storm actually made landfall. And as that changed, they pivoted and they put their plans in action. Uh, so it's been really good. And obviously, Kevin and his team have done a great job. I mean, having so many things pre-positioned. But uh, every request we've, we've asked uh, from, from FEMA uh, has been approved. So, so we appreciate that, and uh, we want to make sure. So you would plan on seeing him while he's in town, no matter when it is? Is he coming? I, from what I understand, he will be here tomorrow. OK. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's the case. With the FEMA administrators here, maybe, 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 so we'll see. But, I mean, at the end of the day, we want all the support that we can get because uh, we understand that there's a, there's a lot of need out there. And these are, these are good communities. You know, the thing is, is uh, these are resilient folks. Uh, these are really, really good, good folks down there, and, and they will bounce back, uh, but we just need to make sure that we can kind of pave the way for them. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. Thank you.